Uh, Kobe's wife, Vanessa, and their uh, three daughters were in the city to view it. Oh my goodness, wish we'd have caught up with her. Vanessa says this is where her late husband's love for basketball started and hopes it gives young people in Philadelphia a safe place to play with equal opportunity, which is, of course, important to Kobe and his daughter. So this is your boy, Charles Gravy. We talk weekly, and I just jumped on here really quickly because I wanted to clear up a few things that I have been hearing. And part of some of the things that I have been hearing is Dr. Umar uh, on a video that I shout out to Forgotten Kings. I happen to watch, uh, you know, I love my podcasters, man. They've been doing a lot of, you know, good reporting, a lot of good journalism, believe it or not, you know, and I think when it comes to podcasters, they are one of the most overlooked sources for micro news. And so that's something that they have to be acknowledged for, right? That they don't necessarily get because they don't consider podcasters or this micro journalism piece true journalism, right? But you're wrong about that. But in any event, it's your boy Charles Gregory, and I wanted to kind of clear up a couple different things, right? If you don't know anything about We Talk Weekly, We Talk Weekly is uh, pretty much, you know, a ra we are radio show, podcast, and uh, t television program, right? And so we've been doing this for a long time, and so we pride ourselves in solutions-based journalism. One of the things that we get a little fired up about or a little upset about is all of the infighting that happens as it relates to our people, people who look like us, right? And this one particular interview with Dr. Umar Johnson on the Joe Buttons podcast, shout out to Joe Buttons, uh, I think it uncovered a lot of issues that has been brewing in the community in addition to raise some issues, right? One of the things that happens as it relates to Dr. Umar, he gets a lot of flat. And I want to put all of this in context, right? First and foremost, I really like Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm a fan of his because he comes from the area, right? Um, I believe he's from Philly. I'm not quite sure, but for the most part, he's always here. So, you know, he's he's a Philadelphian for the most part. I haven't done my due diligence to find out exactly where he's from, but I believe he's from Philly or within the area. So when anyone talks about Philly, I tend to get a little, you know, a little, wait, wait, eyebrow, eyebrow raise, what's going on? What are you talking about? I say about four or five years ago, his PhD was called into question. If anybody would have had the ability to do a little search, research, as uh, a journalist would do, so to speak, you would have found out that he was a true PhD. Well, there was a lot of people who called his PhD into question, and it pretty quickly came out that he was truly a PhD. So shout out to Dr. Umar Johnson. He does great not only for the community, not only for the parents, but for the kids. And that's something that you can't take away from him. Now, his views are a little different as it relates to relationship, where if I'm being transparent and honest, I pretty much agree with him 95% of the time. I'm just not as outspoken as it relates to relationships, but I do believe in my sisters. I believe in supporting my sisters. I believe in, you know, when it comes to if you're considering yourself pro-black, the only way that you can call yourself pro-black is if everything that you do is first and foremost for black people. If you are with someone who doesn't look like you and isn't black, how can you call yourself pro-black? And I'm sure it's a lot of people that will listen to this and correct me and give their whole dissertation or thesis about how someone can mess with someone that is not brown, that doesn't look like us or black, that doesn't look like us and still be pro-black. And that's all cool, you know? And, you know, I'm for who you love and who loves you back. However, I do get what Dr. Umar was saying in this particular argument that was going on, right? So I get that. However, one of the things that stood out for me that I feel like I just have to jump in on is he made a comment that I know 
just wasn't factual. And I probably get a lot of pushback for this, but just know I'm doing this with love and I'm doing this because we are in this space. We are in this sphere of podcasting, journalism, radio, television, micro journalism, micro broadcasting. And one of those things is making sure that at the very least we do our due diligence and fact check. Now, as much as I love Dr. Umar Johnson, just this one thing I had to correct. You know, uh, uh, title alone, it says, Dr. Umar fires back at Jalen Rose diss. <clears throat> Jalen Rose diss him over Vanessa Bryant comment on Joe Budden podcast. Now, pretty much what he's talking about, what you're seeing this picture of is uh, Dr. Umar Johnson in a heated debate on the Joe Budden's podcast. So this is just a video, right? However, Jalen Rose fired at him standing up for a Vanessa Bryant because I'm just putting this in context before I play this. Jalen Rose jumped at him saying, like, who are you to pretty much say this? Coming to the defense of Vanessa Bryant, kind of saying, like, yo, you know, you know, you shouldn't be talking about this, you know, because she is pretty much the, you know, the, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the wife now widow of the Hall of Famer of the, you know, um, Pretty much the GOAT, I consider Kobe as one of the GOATs, um, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant and the baby, you know, um, rest in peace to him. But Dr. Umar was wrong. He was wrong, and I'm going to point this out. But I'm going to play this little clip real quick so you can see what prompted this prompted this discussion today or when I'm talking or referring to and then I'll go a little bit further. Let me ask Kobe you Kobe Bryant. Let me ask you a question. Kobe Bryant. I'm ask you a question. Kobe please. Bryant died. Yeah, yeah, Vanessa inherited his wealth. Sure. And guess what? Is Vanessa Bryant using any of that black man's money to do any good in the black community? Let me ask you Absolutely a question. Absolutely not. Now, there's a couple things that you know stood out in this interview. One is that 99% of the time, I agree with Dr. Umar Johnson. This particular time, I want to say about 95% of what he said I agreed with. Because it's a fact that if you marry someone out of your race and you pass away or you transition, then whomever transitioned, you assume their wealth. And in the conversation of dating out of your race, most black men die faster or die first. And so if you die, then your wealth get transferred to your wife, which if she's not black, then again, the wealth get taken out of the black community. Now, if you are dating someone who looks like you, then for the most part, once you transition, your wealth goes to your wife. If your wife is black, guess what? that money stays within the black community there's a big discussion that money transfers out of the black community way too fast doesn't stay in there long now that said just to put this in context that's what this video was about right and so or that's what the argument was about but he specifically mentioned vanessa bryant because the late kobe bryant rest in peace to him and his daughter uh God bless, God bless the dead, right? Uh, he was very adamant about making sure that he mentioned Vanessa Bryant as one of the examples that he wanted to show that someone passed away, they don't look like you, and that wealth get transferred to that particular person. And specific to this case, it transferred from Kobe, his wealth transferred to Vanessa Bryant, and what is she doing with the money? So he mentioned that she hasn't done anything with the money that is helping the black community. It's false. And I'm not here to protect Vanessa Bryant. I don't know her. She probably don't know anything about us or we talk weekly about me. Um, I don't know Jalen Rose. I know he's, um, you know, he's a, I believe he's a Hall of Famer. I didn't watch him too much, so I'm not a fan of him. If it didn't happen in Philly, I don't pay attention to you. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm an Eagles fan. I'm a Phillies fan. You know, I'm a Sixers fan. <laughs> you know, shout out to AI. And so anything about Philly, I'm going to jump in. That's where we talk weekly is, right? Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. 
So when you say something that has something to do with Philly, which to this case, Vanessa Bryant was actually in Philly doing something for the black community. Now, it was a charity that she did it with. I don't know. I never heard. To be fair, I never heard of that charity. I'm in Philly. Never heard of that charity, right? So, but I know for a fact that there is a new uh, floor or ground at Tustin's where this basketball court is, brand new court, brand new mural, and it looks state of the art. That's a fact. Um, I'm going to read something to you. This is on Fox 29. Kobe and Gianna Bryant Dream Court opens at Tustin Playground in Philadelphia. Now, if you look at, just look at the date now, right? I'm doing this at 12-29-2023. This has published June 15th, 2020. So this is relatively new within a year, right? And it says Philadelphia, a new basketball court playing homage to Philadelphia's native, the late Kobe Bryant, and his daughter, Gianna Bryant, was unveiled at Tustin's Recreation Playground at 501 West Columbia Avenue in City's Overbrook neighborhood. Vanessa Bryant and her daughters traveled to Philadelphia on Tuesday to unveil the new court with city leaders and charity partners. She says Philadelphia is where her late husband, love for basketball, began, and Tustin's Playground is a place he frequented when he was younger. Now, if you go to, this is IG, and I believe this is pronounced Mamba, Mambasita's Sports, right? Like play on Mambasita, right? Um, and it says, we are excited to announce on this Mamba Day that Mamba, Mambasita Sports has partnered with NL, NL, NL Charities, never heard of them, to open three dream courts this fall. One dream court at Pearson's Park in Anaheim, California, Vanessa's hometown in City Kobe Bryant, and Vanessa's visited often. And two dream courts at Tustin Playground in Philadelphia, PA, Kobe's hometown, and a place where he played when he was younger. I can vouch for that. This is a fact he did. He played in Philadelphia. He did a lot of that. And this court is here. It's no question. I'm going to come down a little further. It says, I chose this location so that young people in this community may have a safe space to play with equal opportunity, which was important to Colby and Gianna. Vanessa Bryant wrote on Instagram. Bryant partnered with Nancy Lieberman Charities. I don't know what that is. Never heard of her. Dream Court Initiative, which strives to make basketball more accessible for children while providing them with a safe environment to play. Now, I say all that to say, I think this is another, oh, take a look at this picture, right? Oh, goodness, take a look at this picture. I'm surprised I'm not even showing this. So this picture right here is my guy, uh, Shelton. This is uh, the little Bryants right here. I'm sure this is a Lieberman, and this is the people in the community. This is a fact, y'all. This is a fact. This happened in Philadelphia. And if you know anything about Philly, we like the murder, murder capital of the nation. It's not it's not nothing to be excited or happy about. And I'm sure there's other people that would argue that their city is. But we're talking about almost 400 people in Philadelphia. And that's the last that I heard. That was like last week. I already know that there's more people who passed away since then, right? But we surpassed 400 in just a year. And I'm not talking about Pennsylvania. I'm talking about Philly alone, right? And so when it comes to how much we love Philly, how much we stand up for Philly, we love Philly. Shout out to Overbrook. Shout out to the Pan Panthers out there. I got to get them some shout. I went to Overbrook. But in any event, Kobe Bryant was one of those people who Philly knew and Philly loved, right? And he's the GOAT. Rest in peace. I'm going to play this last video because I want y'all to see this. A little tribute to the late Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna right here in our city. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, oh, this is a live shot, too. We're out there live this morning. Looks like somebody might still be working there. Not... Or playing basketball. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, yeah. Fitting. Uh, it is located, in, in case you want to run by, and I think you would, I do. Wow, it's beautiful. At the Tustin Recreation Playground on, well, right at 59, well, 5901 Columbia Avenue. 
I'll try to get you a little bit better locator on that one. It's more than just mural. The entire court wow. is themed. You can see the number 24. Yeah. And all, like, wow, it's Look at beautiful. That. Look at his eyes. And then you see Gianna's eyes on the right. As uh -huh. we keep panning, it's close up of her eyes it's as well. so oh, good. Wow. It was unveiled yesterday. Uh, Kobe's wife, Vanessa, and their uh, three daughters were in the city to view it. Oh my goodness, if we would have caught up with her. Vanessa says this is where her late husband's love for basketball started and hopes it gives young people in Philadelphia a safe place to play with equal opportunity, which has, of course, important to Kobe and his daughter. I, I say all this to say what? Having places that it keeps the community busy to keep people off the streets and have fun. That's an important thing and that needs to be acknowledged. And I know that Dr. Umar would appreciate uh, the, 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 the outlet for youth to be more engaged and busy doing things that's productive. So Dr. Umar, I love you, my brother. Unfortunately, he was wrong with that, and it is what it is. But I'm your boy, Charles Greg. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can uh, support, and you can share this uh, by way of fair use. This is fair use. This was done in fair use so I can report the facts uh, and do my due diligence in journalism. And anybody who thought about Googling this could have found out that, yeah, she did come in the community. She was there. She did have her what whether that was a charity or not, but she was here and that money did amplify, uh, from my understanding, the charity did uh, go to enhancing and modifying the existing grounds to make Tustin Playground look amazing. Um, maybe later on, if you guys want, just let me know in the comments. I will get uh, Shell, my guy Shell, he was on there. He was in the picture. I will get him on here. We could talk a little bit about that a little more on her appearance and what he what he seen as it relates to more facts of uh, Vanessa Bryant doing some great in the community because he's doing some great work in the community. Shout out to Hilltop Hustlers, right? And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, your boy Charles Gregory. We talk weekly after the talk, and uh, I see you on the other side. Here you go.